Hey, it's just a fear. It does feel quite good to have all of these finally set up since it took me months to plan out this build. So today's content is to build a custom PC for architecture. I kind of spec'd out some of the parts over here based on the availability and also the price and the performance. So I'll definitely go over the reasons behind the certain choices of the parts as I build the machine. But I'm just really itching to just unbox all of this and get them into a working machine. Hopefully the build goes smooth since I don't really know the state of all of these devices. I only have tested the GPU on my recent video. So yeah, I don't really know what to expect. Anyway, starting from this corner here, which is the biggest box, which is Masterbox MB600L V2. And this is a ATX case. I chose ATX route this time because I always showcase mini ATX cases on my channel and I do have a high interest in minimal sort of small build for computers. However, there is a bit of a tax that you need to pay to go smaller and also more compact machine. Therefore, I decided to go down this route this time so that I can maximize upgradability and also all the parts that I can fit into this case without concerning the space constraint or the tax that I need to pay to go smaller. And I found this case from Cooler Master to be quite minimalistic. It doesn't have all the RGBs and the flares of the machines that you might expect out of some of the gaming configurations. And Cooler Master did send me this specific unit a while back. I'm finally getting around producing this video. Anyways, moving on to the motherboard choice. Here I have the motherboard and I also forgot to mention I'll be using this AIO cooler from Cooler Master as well which I featured on my previous video on the custom build so I'll be salvaging it from my previous build to put it into the new machine but that's what I'm going to be using. And the next choice that I had to make was the motherboard and a CPU combination. They go kind of hand to hand, so you have to make your choice. There is a latest generation of CPU from Intel, which is 12th gen. However, this one is 11th gen because going up on the latest technology, just bleeding edge stuff is always more expensive. So I decided to go with one previous gen, which is the 11th gen over here. And it is i7 11 700k so it is overclockable CPU and this is a motherboard to go with Gigabyte has sent me this motherboard for me to showcase on this video and it is a Z590 board and this motherboard has all the features that I need for production and professional tasks that I need to do it does have PCIe Gen 4 USB type C ports along with Wi-Fi 6 so I'm definitely looking forward to utilizing those features on my daily build I kind of haven't really mentioned it but this build will be my main build of choice and also moving on to the graphics card which is a one that I have showcased before on the eGPU video which is the only graphics card that I really was able to get my hands on it was quite difficult to get my hands on one yet also very expensive for me to buy a graphics card at this time so I'm kind of circulating this card for multiple videos since I don't have graphics card to showcase on multiple videos. And my choice is NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. I went down with 3070 Ti because for one, because of the GPU shortage, you gotta buy whatever that you can get your hands on. But also I chose this because I found 3070 Ti to be more balanced in terms of the performance and the price because I'm gonna have to pay double or triple of the cost of this GPU to go one or second tier up from this card and this have plenty of VRAM that I'm gonna utilize in my main build and also it does offer lots of performance so this would be good enough for my purpose and I find that to be adequate for most of people anyways yeah the GPUs became so performant that you don't really need the highest tiers anymore anyways to power the entire build I'm relying on Cooler Master's 850 watt 
power supply here. It is a fully modular unit that has been provided by Cooler Master. And I forgot to mention a few things on the front. Here is the RAM kit. I believe it is a 16 gigabyte kit. I may upgrade it down the road. I do have a bit more RAM modules inside of my main build that I will be able to just migrate over. And also the SSD also provided by Gigabyte. It is 500 gigabyte unit. It is Gen 4 capable. So it is gonna be plenty fast storage. So I'll be just looking to pair all of this up into this case in this video. So let's get to it. All right, let's get this open. Usually the best way to get the case out of the box is flipping it upside down. You can't see me, can you? And that is definitely upside down. Here is a manual. And I just realized that this is a tempered glass unit. So it is all tinted and preferable for other people who want to showcase inside of their cases. However, I actually prefer not to do that. I just want a solid panel, simple life. So I'll be either buying or requesting to get a solid side panel so I can just pair it up easily. For this video's purpose, I guess I'll have to roll with the tempered glass side panel, but I definitely do know that the solid side panel is an option for other people who's looking to purchase this case. Other than that, I really have been preferring Cooler Master case designs because I found it to be quite simple and easy to build in with. I do appreciate you, Cooler Master. It's just that I kind of wanted the solid side panel. You can see that there is a fan included. I believe that is 120 mil. And then you've got five inch base that you can utilize if you want to. And then there is a garage for power supply. And we've got some cables and accessories that are included here on their side. I was trying to get to this one. And also on the top, there is a mesh that is attached by magnet. So you can just simply lift it up to clean it and then just put it back in. So you can put fans or radiators on top as well as you can see the USB type A along with the power button and then the headphone jack and then the reset button with the LED indicator. On the front is quite simple. You will see the Cooler Master simple logo up here. Let's open up the back side. So that is the back side of it and you can get access to underside there. And there is a 3.5 inch base for you to mount the hard drives. And underside, you, there is also a filter that you can take out and clean if you want to. And the feed is quite grippy, so it doesn't slide around as freely. And you'll also see that there are some ventilations on the side of the front. And I think that's pretty much it in terms of this case. And it is quite light too. It's not hard to handle this case. I don't like ones that are just way too heavy. So yeah, pretty well built. It's mostly metal, but the front is plastic. Okay, let's go ahead and open this motherboard. And on their side, there are some stickers for me to have if I want to have them. And also the installation guide in the user manual. And on their side, you will find all the cables and accessories that you're gonna need. And based on the rate of this build is going, what I will do, I will basically do the build without all the talks and then do a time lapse of it. And at the end, I'll just kind of show you the conclusion of how my build has gone and how all the parts are working.
Okay, the build is actually now complete. I have connected my camera to that build now and I'm just running off of and I'm just seeing all the screens turn on and everything looks fine. So I'll go ahead and run a couple of benchmarks for me to validate this machine against a couple of other machines that I had my hands on. But I have no doubts in being able to perform at least better than where I used to be and also overall graphical performance would be quite good since now I have the brand new graphics card. So I hope you have enjoyed that content. If you did, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. I plan on doing frequent updates or upgrades to this machine in the near future. I actually have another AMD build that is coming up that's gonna be mini ITX build that I'm planning on. So stay tuned for that. There's a lot of discussions that are floating around between AMD build and the Intel. And hopefully as I finish the AMD build, I'll be able to compare that to this brand new build that I have just finished and be able to draw sort of the conclusion between what performs better and what the pricing is. Perhaps all of that content will follow on future videos. But for now, thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.